I'm Kat, and uh, we're at the Our Place Society. The Meridium over here was jam-packed full over the last, well, it's always jam-packed full. Um, over the last couple of days, though, the cops have come and cleaned it up um, by bringing in a truck and packing away the, the carts on a vehicle. The first day, I was aware that there was about six removed. Uh, without letting the people know. So, uh, then yesterday there was a bunch more gotten rid of. But this whole thing from the end to end was completely full. It's not because they've been doing their cleanup. And downtown has been ridiculous. We've had um, like our normal area at uh, St. Anne's, uh, the St. Anne's Academy, um, was a quiet place that we could go and just sit and chillax. Yeah. You got cops going through there now. You, you can't sit anywhere, otherwise you're thought of as loitering. Um, it's mandatory now, no panners. You're, you have to be three feet at least away from the building. Um, and there's, you can't go anywhere now in this town. You've got cops on bikes, you've got cops in suburbans, you've got cops in vans, you've got cops walking, you've got undercover cops. No, you are And it's a little bit much. <laughs> you feel like you have no privacy whatsoever. And today we have Kevin Abram. Um, Kevin, you are involved in a red tent city idea that is uh, being talked about quite a bit. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the idea came as I noticed that there was a lot of homeless problems and it actually started with the Pandora Green anti-camping bylaw. They were moving people off without giving them housing and they were telling them there was no housing available. I remember that in Vancouver, the same thing was being said around the Olympics, close to the end. Pivot didn't believe the city of Vancouver. They set up a red tent city and uh, within a month, housing that they said was not available became available. And Part of the idea is to house people, but not everybody wants housing. Yeah, they same. keep on talking about how they have all these shelter spaces and people are so ungrateful to not using it. But some people, they have all of their, their possessions in a shopping cart and, and they will lose them because they can't bring them in. There are some people that I know that I've talked to that like living outside. They're okay with that. That person wants to live outside and want that to be a safe place to be. You know, and, and I was talking actually with the city councillor, um, Philip Lucas, who actually voted against the campaign. Well, while he's awesome, that guy. And um, he has talked about a Dignity Village, and the more I looked into it, Dignity Village started out as a tent city. The Observer Trading in Vancouver is really, really good. It's really concise, and um, if anybody's interested, that would be a great thing. The Cop Watch also is also. They're both great things to have, I mean, and they are needed to make sure that people are safe cool. and treated respectfully. Well, let's start walking. This downtown whole scene just eats away at everybody so slowly. Real life is real color with real people. With the state of homelessness, what do you think the state of homelessness is in in Victoria? What state is it in? Piss For the poor. Homeless? It's poor. It's piss poor. Not enough like beds, not enough services. You're screwed on Sunday. There's nothing to do for people on Sunday. Yeah. Monday to Friday is, you know, you're great. But, you know, homelessness doesn't take a back seat on, you know, on the weekends because, you know, mom and pop don't want to, you know, come out and hand out sandwiches and stuff like that. You know, I'm not giving them shit or anything, but it's a fact. It's a reality. You ask anyone on the street there, you know, yeah. Saturday is bad. Sunday is the worst, you know. And that's when you know, I guarantee it, crime rates go up on Sunday. Actual factual. Which, uh, Supply and demand. You give them all this stuff, they don't have to go out scavenging and.
Yeah. 